This video will demonstrate the performance of a chi-square test for independence, also known as a cross tabulation. In this example, we're going to do what's known as a two by two cross tabulation. Now, there are several assumptions that are involved in using the chi-square test for independence. The first is that we're assuming the study participants are from an independent random sample. Um, we have two variables that we want to compare and they are independent of one another. Typically, one variable is going to be some sort of an independent variable, which could be a category or could be some sort of a risk factor um, or other type of categorical uh, predictor or explanatory variable. And then the other variable will be an outcome. Again, typically going to be categorical in nature. Either you have a disease or you don't. Um, you're below a criteria or above a criteria. Now, typically when we do a chi-square test, uh, we expect that each potential observe or expected frequency will be at least 10. Okay, if we have a situation in which we have an expected frequency that is 5 or fewer, then we would do a different type of test called the Fisher's Exact Test, which we'll cover in a separate video. And then we also assume that there are no cells with an expected frequency of 0. So if we met those assumptions, we can move forward with the analysis. And so as you can see here, the research question we're trying to um, understand is, does gender uh, seem to predict, that's our independent variable, does gender, and more specifically, does male, being a male, seem to predict your exercise frequency? Um, in this case, you're either exercising less than three times a week or you're exercising three times or greater per week. And so what we're trying to determine if gender does have an effect on exercise frequency. So in this case, we have the independent variable and the dependent variable are both categories. Um, in this case, and we have two levels to each of these categories. So two genders and then two possible outcomes as far as the frequency of exercise. Now we need to first of all set a null hypothesis and the null hypothesis uh, typically can be set using um, an observed uh, or excuse me an expected frequency of equality among all the four possibilities. So we've got four uh, combinations of variables here and so if we had 44 subjects which in this case we do we would assume that each of the cells would contain 11 possible outcomes. So in other words, each cell, four cells, 44 subjects, 11 expected frequencies per cell. If we had uh, four cells and 40 subjects, then the ex expected frequency would be 10 per cell and so on. And so that becomes our no hypothesis. Now we also uh, have to set a hypothesis testing criteria. And again, we're going to use the alpha level of P less than 0.05. So if the chi-square value we calculate is associated with a p-value less than 0.05, then we'll be able to reject the null hypothesis and say that there is a difference in the outcome based upon gender. If we have a chi-square value that's associated with a p-value greater than 0.05, then we would accept the null hypothesis and say there is an unclear effect of gender on the outcome, or there appears to be no significant effect of gender on the outcome. Okay, so in order to do this particular analysis, we're going to go to the Analyze menu. And we're going to go to Descriptive Statistics, and we're going to go to the option called Cross Tabs. Now, the first thing it's going to ask you to do is move your variables into two options as far as these boxes, and they're called either rows or columns. And the reason they're called this is because the, the outcomes are going to be placed into what's known as a contingency table. Um, and the variables are either going to be represented by the rows or by the columns. And so the convention is that the rows will be represented by your independent variable, in this case gender. And your top row will be uh, will be housed the level of that variable that is important to you. So in this case male is important to us as far as our, our predictor variable, so that will be placed um, in the top row and then female will be placed on the bottom. If we're using a risk factor um, as our independent variable, then 
the subjects that had that risk factor would be in the top row and the subjects that did not have that risk factor would be in the bottom row. And then the columns are going to rep be represented by our outcomes. Um, and then the first column, the left-hand column, will be represented by people that have the outcome of interest, in this case exercising less than three times a week. And the people in the right-hand column will be uh, those that exercise greater than three times a week. Another example might be if our outcome is the presence of a disease, the subjects in the left-hand column will be the subjects that have the disease, the right-hand column will be the subjects that do not have the disease. Okay, so once we've organized that and figured that out, uh, the next step is to go to the statistics button, and we need to make sure that chi-square is chosen as the test that we're going to perform. Okay, we also want to make sure that we're choosing risk um, as an option because uh, we will get a, uh, an odds ratio um, presented to us and that will give us an, uh, the ability to determine the magnitude of the effect of our independent variable. We'll talk a little bit more about that when we look at the output. Okay, then we click continue. And once we have done that, we're ready to go. And so we can click OK. And then what we can see here is that contingency table or cross tabulation table that I mentioned. So here on the rows on the left hand side is our independent variable with the level of the variable of interest on the top row, male versus female. And then in the columns we have our outcome, in this case exercise frequency, with that level of interest in the left hand column and the other in the right hand column. So remember our aim here was to see if male predicted exercising less than three times per week. Um, but again, if, if disease is our outcome, then the subjects that had the disease would be in the left-hand column. Subjects that did not would be in the right-hand column. And then if we had a particular risk factor, um, such as uh, a positive blood test versus a negative blood test, um, the positive risk factor would be on the top row and the negative, or the absence of the risk factor would be on the bottom row. And so we can also see the actual observed frequencies here. So the observed frequency for males exercising less than three times per week is 16, for females, 8. If we look at the frequency of males exercising uh, three or more times per week, we see that's 6. And then for females, that's 14. So what we want to try and determine is, is this a statistically significant difference? Obviously, they're, they're different as far as how the frequencies have turned out. Um, but we want to determine if that's statistically significant. So we go to our chi-square value, and here's our chi-square value. Remember, if it's greater than 0.05, we're going to, or associated with a p-value greater than 0.05, we're going to accept. If it's associated with a p-value less than 0.05, we're going to reject our null hypothesis. And in this case, it's less than 0.05, so we're going to be able to reject our null and say that there is a significant difference between the number of males who exercise less than three times per week and the number of females who exercise three times per week. There's no need for a post hoc test in this example because we only have two groups. So we can see that males exercise less than three times per week at a much higher frequency than females exercise less than three times per week. Now we had um, greater than 10 expected frequencies per cell. We talked about the number of subjects we have and the number of options. So we had a null hypothesis that had 11 expected frequencies in each cell. If you run into a situation in which you have less than 10 but greater than 5 expected frequencies per cell, you can do something called the continuity correction to use that for your hypothesis test. So instead of doing the Pearson chi-square, we'd use this continuity correction value and then use the p-value that's reported here. But in our case, that's not necessary because we have greater than 10 expected frequencies. Okay, so we've been able to reject the null hypothesis and say that there is a significant difference. And by looking at the observed frequencies, we can see that males exercise less than three times per week at a greater rate than females. So now let's look at the practical significance of this outcome. And so what we can then do is go down to the odds ratio for this, and we can see the value is 4.6.
So what that indicates is males are 4.6 times more likely to exercise less than three times per week than females. And, that, and that's a large uh, level of risk. Remember, a level of risk of one means that there's really no difference um, as far as the frequencies of one outcome versus the other on male versus female. If it's a negative risk factor, that would mean that females were more likely to exercise less than three times per week. But males are almost five times more likely to exercise less than three times per week. Now we can also look at the confidence interval of this odds ratio. And we can see, uh, again, the range here is between 1.29 or 1.3 and 16.7 or 17 uh, times. So that could indicate that another sample might have a risk that's as low as 1.29, but another sample might have a risk that's as high as 17 times greater for males versus females. So that's a large confidence interval uh, range, but you could likely argue that even the lower range is probably still clinically significant. If we've got a situation where someone is 1.3 times more likely to have a an unhealthy behavior like exercising less than three times per week, that could still be clinically significant. And certainly being five times more likely to have an unhealthy behavior like sedentary lifestyle, then that could also be clinically significant. So to summarize, the chi-square test for independence or the, the cross-tabulation analysis allows us to examine um, two variables an independent variable and an outcome that have two levels apiece. It allows us to determine if there is a significant effect of the independent variable on the outcome. Using the, the Pearson chi-square value, we can make a hypothesis decision about that difference or about that effect. And then we can always also use the odds ratio to determine the practical significance of that potential outcome.